Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a beautiful week together again. I'm your host, Mary, and I'm excited for this one. This is an episode I've been actually brainstorming for a while. But before I get into it, I just want to thank all of you for joining me and for listening over the past couple of weeks. Our listeners have increased and it's been great to just feel the community growing. I've been getting more messages on Instagram and a few emails actually, which I do love an email. It feels like today's day and age of um, like snail mail, if anyone remembers what snail mail was, but it's been great to get some emails and feedback and just conversation around the Self Love Club podcast because again, if I haven't told you before, I will tell you again that I'm doing this not only for myself, but really for all of us to have a place to feel heard, to be seen, to share our experiences. I have some guests lined up coming up over the next couple of weeks, and it's just exciting to grow a community together. I think in today's day and age with the internet, it can often feel somehow isolating, even though we're even more connected than before with social media and technology. I do find that I go through phases of feeling disconnected despite being on my phone for too many hours in a day. Uh, A lot of times it just feels like other people's lived experiences aren't similar to mine. And then I feel isolated in my lived experience or I start to question if, am I doing something wrong? Am I not living my life the way that I should be because I'm not sharing it in a certain way on social media? It's a whole mental thing. And I'm sure you can relate in some capacity to this because I do think it's affecting all of us in different ways. And the way that we show up on the internet is supposed to be, I guess, a certain way, or we've been told to show up as a certain way. But I am so glad to be able to show up here for all of you. And bear with me today because I may get lost for some words because I do have a bit of a migraine. I've had a migraine all week long and it's been something I've been trying to figure out in different ways. So if you deal with chronic pain, you understand that sometimes you know exactly how to care for the pain flare up you're going through. And other times it's tricky. So this week I've given myself rest, but I've also given myself movement and fitness to see if the blood flow and increasing of moving my body would help. I've kind of given myself a little bit of everything and I'm still battling the migraine. And one of the easiest ways to tell that I have a migraine is I lose my words. So I'm going to do my very best to not lose my words because like I said, this episode is one I have wanted to talk about for a while. So let's just get into it. It definitely relates back to our monthly intention of resetting and also slowing down and resting and just being more present in yourself. But this one is a very close to my heart type of topic. So as you can tell by the title, going from girl boss to soft girl is kind of the opposite ends of a spectrum. And before I get into it, I want to define what both are because we've definitely heard these terms, again, on the internet over the years, definitely soft girl is newer, but girl boss has been around for a long time. So girl boss is a term that was coined by the entrepreneur fashion mogul Sophia Emma Rousseau, who had a clothing company slash website called Girl Boss. And um, well, actually, her clothing company was called Nasty Gal, but she had a girl boss mentality, I guess she coined Girl Boss. And she wrote a book and she developed a lot of content around that there's still newsletters and a website that has a marketplace, all this stuff around Girl Boss. And it was a big thing in the 2010s to be a quote unquote girl boss, which I have a personal uh, distaste for that term because you would never call Mark Zuckerberg a boy boss, but that's me on another note. But that basically term is just being a female boss, a female leader, entrepreneur, someone in a male dominant space, taking up space. So that is the girl boss definition. And then soft girl or soft girl era, as you will most definitely see on TikTok, if you haven't seen, is basically the complete opposite is maybe not even working, being as slow and intentional with your self care, what your body needs, listening to yourself, not working for the man, not chasing a paycheck or hustling or grinding or anything, and basically just existing in a space that you can love yourself and love those around you at full capacity. 
And so I'm going to talk about really how girl bossing kind of ruined me in some form or another and ruined my idea of what I thought it meant to be a business owner, a founder, and a female entrepreneur. So when I started my business, Mary Young, in 2014, this was the peak of the girl boss era. Sophia had just launched her book. Yes, I did buy the girl boss book and read it, devoured it. I was reading all these other books, you know, Lean In, Sheryl Sandberg, thank you for that one. There were so many different things about showing up as a female boss, being this truly boss, I have to say it, boss bitch, because let's be honest, that's the way that a lot of women were seen in a workplace and being a boss. And this concept was you grind, you hustle, you compete with your male counterparts, but you also do better. You show up, you are funny, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're driven, you somehow have time to work out, but you also have social plans and networking events and your business is growing year over year, month over month, you're getting investors, you're building these teams of all female teams, female led teams. And I'm exhausted even just saying that. So imagine being in your entrepreneur era and really just trying to strive to be a girl boss, because that's what's been actually sold to us as female founders and female entrepreneurs. And I believed it. I was sold. I was truly hustling, sacrificing time with my family, time with my friends, vacations, all of it to focus on grinding and hustling and growing a business. And I'm not going to say that that was a wrong decision. I am where I am today because of that. I'm very grateful for how hard I've worked to get to where I am. And I 100% believe hard work gets you to the finish line. But this concept of grinding so hard and sacrificing so much of what your body needs or even just sacrificing listening to your body is not what I needed. At one point in my 20s, I thought I could operate and thrive on six to seven hours of sleep a night. And when I tell you that the moments that I would get on the streetcar to go to a meeting or go to a workout class, I would literally fall asleep if I was sitting down and not at my computer within minutes because I was so exhausted, but I still thought, oh, that's okay. You know, catch a couple Z's on my way to a spin class before I get on the bike, spin for 50 minutes, get back to the office, get back to work, continue to hustle and grow and build. And it honestly took me the pandemic to realize that I wasn't listening to my body I was chasing an unrealistic ideal of what this girl boss mentality was or was set up to be for women. And it was really hard to disconnect from that concept. And I would say it's something I'm still struggling with because I am an overachiever, a high achiever. I'm ambitious. I like to be productive. I like to be busy, as you know from last week's episode. This is very much in me from being a very young child. I like to do things. I like to be on the go and experiencing. And it's hard to be able to separate the two of working, being an entrepreneur, but also listening to your body, listening to what you need, and not operating at a speed that's not only unrealistic, but also unhealthy for you. And that's where I'm starting to enter my soft girl era. So... As I mentioned, soft girls, you can truly find this hashtag on TikTok and Instagram and learn so much about soft girls and soft girl era, but it really is about just slowing down and being present, listening to your body, resting, sleeping in, doing low intensity workouts, no more high intensity hit classes, spin six to seven days a week. It's about caring for yourself, caring for others. A lot of it does come down to, as I've seen a lot of women share about building that sort of traditional family, caring for your partner, having children, being a present parent. And I'm not going to get too much into that because there are some, some boundaries within that that I don't agree with. But the overall concept of a soft girl is really about listening to yourself. It is about slowing down. It is about giving yourself rest when you need it. And that doesn't mean you can't be an entrepreneur. And that's something, again, that I've been struggling with is how do I go from girl boss to soft girl without, I guess, quitting everything, stopping everything that I'm doing. But it's about being more intentional 
And that's a really big thing when it comes to rest and resetting is you have to be very intentional with it. Otherwise, it's not actually going to happen or you're not going to be recharging your battery even when you are resting. You have to be conscious with why you're resting, what you're gaining from it, how you're trying to take care of yourself, like really listening to what your body needs. Because sometimes resting is still going out for a coffee with a friend, but it's not going to the bar and having your nervous system overwhelmed by the sounds, the smells, the noises, the lights, all of that good stuff, because sometimes that can just be truly too much. So when it comes to my soft girl era that I'm leaning into, a lot of that actually looks like romanticizing my daily life. And I know I touched on this last week, but this is a great way to Step into your soft girl era without thinking that you need to do this whole extreme of like quitting your job, quitting anything that actually gives you joy from having a passion or pursuing something. Again, being a soft girl doesn't mean you can't be an entrepreneur. I don't want to encourage the no career, no job, no income and relying on someone else aspect of soft girl, which you will likely see if you search this up. So for me, soft girl is romanticizing those simple moments each day because they're going to happen. Cleaning the bathroom is going to happen. Doing my dishes, also going to happen. So if I can romanticize those moments and slow them down and be intentional with them and use them as a way to reconnect with my body, check in with how I'm feeling, maybe how has my day been? Sort of do a daily debrief with myself because you don't always have to do this with a partner. I know we talk about that in society a lot about like checking in with your partner and sharing how your day has been. But a lot of times we need to do it with ourselves first. A lot of things we do with our partners, we should probably do with ourselves first. But by romanticizing these moments and being more intentional with them, I can really connect with my inner self, hear that inner voice that we are learning to hear and connect with and see how I felt through the day. So were my emotions high? Did I feel tense? Can I unclench my jaw? As I say that right now, unclench your jaw. I know for me, if I wasn't speaking, my jaw would most likely be clenched. So looking for the tension in my body, being aware of where it's sitting, how it's feeling, and how I can start to move through it. So when I'm doing these intentional daily practices that are basically chores and routines and habits that I have, I also try to look at what I can add on after that's going to feel like a bit of rest or reward for me. So if I'm doing the dishes and I can feel my jaw locking and being so tight, my shoulders rising, touching my ears, and the tension in my shoulders just getting tighter and tighter, I realize, you know what, I really need to stretch. Or I need to put one of those little hot bean bags on my shoulders, help that relax my muscles and then do a deep stretch before I go to bed. Because if I go to bed with my jaw tight and my shoulders tight, guess what's going to happen? They're going to stay tight. And then that's going to carry on tomorrow. And that's added stress. And that's also going to add more stress to my life of how can I deal with this tension? I'm getting more headaches. I need to get a massage. When can I fit a massage in? And as you can hear, I start to spiral of all these things that I need to do. And that's not soft girl energy. I don't want us to feel overwhelmed by caring for ourselves. And I say that because I don't want to feel overwhelmed for caring myself. And I often do feel overwhelmed. I think I had a mini breakdown the other day talking to Michael about how I couldn't fit everything in. Because every day I struggle with, quote unquote, doing it all, surprise, surprise, because my brain was wired during the girl boss era of truly doing it all and making it look easy. And that's so unrealistic. And so I have to work on that within myself of breaking down this narrative of being the best, not only for myself, but for other people showing up 100%, giving each other whether it's in my workplace, in my family, my friends, giving everyone the energy that I want to give, even if I don't have it within myself, and especially if I don't have it to give to myself. So it's so easy to care for others and forget to care for ourselves, And that's where the soft girl era really does allow you to slow down and think about how have I been caring for myself? As women, I would say more common than not, 
we're nurturers and not all of us. And that's totally fine if you do not relate to this. Also, if you don't relate to that, amazing, because maybe you've already connected with this side of yourself that says, hey, I can't care for other people until I care for myself. I need to be in a good place before I'm nurturing on others. But I do know for myself, it's easy to nurture and care for someone else and truly forget about myself in that situation. And sometimes that's necessary. I will say that there's moments of stress or um, disaster, chaos, whatever it may be in your life that you kind of have to react and you have to just kind of go into focus mode. And for me, that's when my husband, Michael, has ever had a health scare, which he does deal with some health struggles. So there's times that he's in the hospital and I do have to go into go mode. I can't think about I need to go meditate for an hour or I need to go do this or that. My priority at that time is him and his health. And I always get a, I would say like a hangover after doing that, after being so focused on someone else and having that adrenaline rush of caring for someone else and prioritizing someone else or prioritizing other things than myself that I really get this adrenaline hangover that mm, feels like burnout, which again, I don't want burnout for any of us. So by slowing down, really being intentional day to day with ourselves and acknowledging that, yes, there's still things that are going to happen that will stress us out. There's no way to avoid that, especially in today's day and age with the world we live in, with technology, social media, email constantly coming into your phone. Stress is really inevitable, but there are ways to manage it in a slower pace to remind ourselves that it is not the end of the world if you don't get back to that email by a certain time. It is not the end of the world if you don't reply to those texts. I know for me, for a long time, it felt so uncomfortable and I felt like I was letting people down if I didn't reply to their texts almost immediately or the first time I saw it on my phone. Now I have the ability to know I don't have the capacity to reply to this message the way that I want to. I want to actually show up to this text especially with most of my friends being long distance friends, our texting conversation is how we stay in touch, how we communicate and continue our relationship. So I make sure that when I'm replying to texts and I'm showing up, whether it's a FaceTime call in person, in whatever capacity that I am able to do so in a way that feels natural to me, but also feels positive and I have the right energy because I've cared for myself first. And I know we hear this all the time, you know, you can't, you can't love on others unless you're loving on yourself. You can't, can't take care of others unless you're taking care of yourself. But that's really the concept of the slowing down, the resting, and the reset, which is what I'm doing. So I'm resetting from being a girl boss to being a slow girl in her slow girl era, or being a soft girl in her soft girl era, but also using that soft girl era to keep me aligned with my goals and my passions. Because again, when we're being intentional with ourselves, when we're checking in with our inner voice, we're listening to what our body needs, what our mind needs, our soul needs, we can recognize that I really do want to chase this passion. I really do want to build this business. And I do want to show up for my nine to five job and be a great employee. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But once it gets to a point that you are sacrificing what's good for you, you're sacrificing your health, both mental or physical, and you feel usually underwhelmed by your day-to-day life because you never feel like you've accomplished enough, then that's where the problem begins. So like I had my mini breakdown, I thought that I couldn't do it all. I couldn't fit it all in. And I had to really remind myself that Every day is going to be different and I can't make sure that every day has every box checked off. I can't do the house cleaning, the tidying up, the meditation before work, great calls, but also getting things done on my computer, checking off all my tasks, going for a walk or a workout, cooking a healthy meal, but also unwinding before bed, but maybe also chatting with a friend and connecting with a family member so that I have that social interaction that I need, but then also connecting with my partner and still getting eight hours of sleep. Like even as I say that, the math is not mathing. It's just not realistic. So for me, as I enter my soft girl era, I'm looking at my calendar and my week and trying to figure out how I can put more moments of rest in it. How I can say, you know what, on 
two days of the week, I'm going to focus on tidying up the house and cleaning up things and, you know, working away on having a clean home instead of doing a full deep clean once a week and feeling exhausted by that. And then maybe there's one or two nights a week that are my social nights, whether that's in person or via phone call, FaceTime, whatever it may be, really looking at how I can add more balance into my life instead of this, you have to achieve it all, all at once in the best way possible, showing up 100% and making it look easy. Because as you're listening to this, I guarantee you, you know, none of that is easy. It's made to look easy on the internet. I'm sure even if you've looked at my Instagram in previous years, you've thought, okay, and maybe Mary makes it look easy. I don't know how she does it. Trust me, it's not easy. I just don't record my mental breakdowns and put them on the internet. I'm not there yet. I don't know if I ever will be, but I definitely save my mental breakdowns and my crying for myself at this point. But by knowing and making peace with the fact that we can't do it all and we shouldn't do it all. We're not built that way, especially as women. If you are identifying as a female, you have a 28 give or take day cycle. You're not around a 24 hour cycle like men, which is really how the world specifically in the Western world is built is to operate around a 24 hour cycle. And for us, it's a 28 day cycle. And so you go through phases of energy, low energy, more socializing energy, more self-reflective energy, all of these different things go into your cycle. We need to start understanding that each day is not going to be the same and that we need to listen to our body each day because it's asking for different things. And when we can hear what our body is asking for, we can give ourselves that rest that we need or that social juice that we need or that fun and adventure that we're craving. And then we're going to start to feel like we are accomplishing things, not only in our workplace, but also in our personal life and our care for ourselves and our ability to truly show up as our best self because we know who we are and we know what we need. So I really hope if you ever felt that pressure from the girl boss era that we're all ready to just like let that go. We can put that on the bonfire, light it up, roast some s'mores on it because we are in our soft girl era. We are slowing down. We are resting. We are resetting. We are being present. We're checking in with ourselves, and we're knowing that there is no 100% every single day. We need to be able to give ourselves what we need, listening to our body, breathing more, unclenching our jaw, relaxing, shaking it out, whatever it may be, starting somewhere each day slowly, whether it's romanticizing doing the dishes, being more intentional with your skincare, maybe adding one extra step and not rushing it before bed, reading a chapter a day of a book that you've wanted to read for so long, but you've never gotten to. Try to add something into your day that allows you to slow down, to reconnect with yourself, and to really feel like you know who you are and what you need. Because being a soft girl is empowering. And when you're connected with yourself, I think that's when you're the most boss bitch you can be. And that's just me. That's just something I'm learning. And again, I said this before, I will say it again. I'm still trying to figure this out. I do not have this solved. I am on a journey. And I really hope we can be on this journey together of entering our soft girl era in the most healthy way possible. I hope you have an amazing day and remember to love yourself first.